guys today. Yeah, Here on the floor at Rapid 2023 in Chicago. Um, I have with me Ron Wessel, the CEO of NSL Analytical, and Dr. Ed Herderick, who is the VP of Science and Technology Development. So guys, I'm really glad you're here today. Um, you know, I remember when uh, I first heard of NSL Analytical, I was like, what is that? <laughs> you occupy such a unique space. Um, and I'm excited to have you here so we can explore that a little bit. Um, I'm wondering, Ron, if you would kick us off by just talking a little bit about your vision for NSL Analytical's role and, and how you envision working in the additive space. Mm -hmm. Terrific, well thank you for having us this afternoon. It's uh, Ed and my pleasure to, uh, to be a partner with America Makes for several years now. And uh, Anacetal Analytical has been in existence nearly 80 years. Uh, I've been fortunate to be... Uh, you don't look that old. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> Getting there closer every day. And, uh, you know, we've been, I've been, had the privilege of leading the organization now for three years. Ed has joined us about three months ago now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, He's still shiny. Yeah, you know, we're on a journey really to continue to service the industry. Uh, quality assurance, uh, testing, uh, materials development, and really just a trusted partner at the end of the day. It it's really th runs through our DNA, runs through our values, and uh, we're thrilled to be here today. And where are you guys located? Uh, we have two laboratories in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, okay, that's a great place for to support the manufacturing mechanism in our country. So a lot of stuff up there. Yeah, yeah, small businesses obviously in our DNA. Oh yeah, um, Ed and I have both worked for really large corporations, but uh, something about uh, NSL and, and being a part of this type of an industry really um, lights us up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming from large industry, you really do see where things are things are really good and functioning and then where the holes are and where small businesses can either fill in those mm -hmm. gaps but also fall through the cracks. It's mm -hmm. it's kind of a weirdness. It's, it's That's a unique experience. I like that. Mm -hmm. Ed, tell me about your new role three months in. Uh, you're still new. I think you get to say you're new for at least a few more months, maybe, yeah, exactly. maybe longer. Um, and I know you have a rich history in additive manufacturing, but tell me how you see yourself, you know, moving forward with NSL Analytical in this very familiar uh, space mm -hmm. for you. Well, I've dedicated my career to industrializing additive manufacturing. So what I've been doing, so what my friends are doing, that's really my passion, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and there's this whole nexus of design and machines and materials all together. And why this was such an exciting career opportunity for me is really as we go from development to production and more applications, um, you know, I've always had a real passion um, for testing, non-destructive testing, inspection, that quality side of things. And, and this was an opportunity to, in a really pure play kind of way in my career, um, work with some great people to do that. Because um, it's a big gap, right? As we, all these machine manufacturers are doing incredible work, right? More lasers, new technologies, new modalities. Mm -hmm. The materials manufacturers are coming up with new resins and new wires and new powders. I, I, I mean, it's such an exciting time in the industry and the volume is starting to just take off. I think we can all feel that. And well, how do you know it's good? So if you move from development to production and we all want to do it in critical industries like space, defense, areas of national need, biomedical. I mean, these are no fail industries. We have to have confidence in the materials and the way you have confidence is good data, right? And so, so when I met Ron and, and the whole team, um, great group, they've been around for a long time. Um, and, and again, it's just a super exciting career opportunity for me to, to bring that additive passion yeah. to this part of the market that really needs it. You know, I could certainly validate uh, everything you just said because you and I were working on some pretty significant projects to take the industry to the next level. We've got a lot of tech development, we've got a lot of processes, but like you said, validating those to industries where there is no ability to fail yep. is the moment that we're in, in yep. additive. And companies like NSL Analytical 
have the ability to take that process and to take that product and make sure that we can rely on it. As a society, we expect, you know, the regulatory regime to protect us. Mm -hmm. And I think when you have advanced technologies that are moving so fast, yep. new equipment, new materials, there's this period of time where it's a little perilous. And I think maybe, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but <laughs> maybe NSL Analytical is standing in that gap right now. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about that? Should I keep going? Yeah, yeah. 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 well, uh, that's right. The way you bridge that gap to production is with data, good data. And it's going to be really fast, mm -hmm. right? That's, yeah. that's something that is a hallmark of our company and something that not just our testing industry, but the additive industry needs, right? Because the hallmark, one of the hallmarks of additive from the earliest days, right? Rapid prototyping, rapid development, shorter supply chains. They need to answer fast, yeah. right? And, and so we're going to need a blend of existing technology that we know really, really well, right? The, the tried and true gold standard chemistry Right, the, the tried and true gold standard mechanical testing, characterization, um, inspection technologies, but we're also going to need new technologies that really utilize the digital threat. Again, that's one of the other things that makes additive so great is it's truly digital manufacturing. So it's not just it's not just the numbers, but but how do I link that data to the in process quality monitoring mm -hmm. and all the way back to the to, to the designers to complete the digital thread. Exactly. Can you share how, uh, Ron, you see NSL Analytical going to the market with this, you know, you've been doing this a long time. How is this moment different than before? Mm. Well, we think we were just, really, quite frankly, being a part of the industry, observing what was happening. And, you know, we, a decent percentage of our business today supports this industry in particular. We also, do all the tried and true um, forms of fabrication, sure. uh, material types uh, across the board. But as additive continues to really now go on its next wave of growth, we wanted to be well positioned for the next 80 years. And what better way to bring someone like Ed yeah. onto the team to really help yeah. us make certain that we don't have a gap, but that we can help others uh, solve it. So thinking of, of you not having a gap, it's true that we know additive industry right now, I mean, there's a handful of really large players, whether that's equipment makers or material processors, mm -hmm. but then there's a whole lot of small ones, because mm -hmm. that's the nature, right, yeah. of, it, yeah. of it. And then, you know, whether it's through mergers and acquisitions that those small companies become larger, mm -hmm. um, or it's just through organic growth because you know the world needs what they provide. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could talk to me a little bit about, either of you can take this question, about how NSL Analytical is helping that growth and development stage for companies at whatever stage they're at. Can you talk mm -hmm. about your vision for that? I mean, we, we work with everybody, right? And, and some of our best partners are small but mighty businesses. Right, and and again, this is a really exciting and super fun community of practice. Right, nobody's in additive because it's a job. Right? right, you walk the whole show floor. Everybody's here because they're passionate about additive. Right, yeah. and like if you're not, like come on, it's 3D printing. It's awesome. Right, yeah. like it's just fun. Like it's in the air. There's yeah. the passion. There's that sort of shoulder to shoulder. Let's roll up our sleeves, and and make. Again, not just the additive industry. Let's make rockets better. Mm -hmm. Let's make healthcare better. Let's make our nation more stable. Let's improve national defense. Let's bring jobs, right, to, to, to Ohio and to the whole country. I mean, so we, we, we work with people that are, and companies that are passionate about manufacturing. And, and the great thing is, additive exists on a continuum. Right, casting guys, they're using a lot of additive. The forging guys, 
right? And, 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 and then you have these interesting hybrid technologies where you're adding features to forgings, so we're adding value yes. to manufacturing capability in this country. Yeah. And again, at the end of the day, how can you have confidence in it? You gotta have data. You do. You gotta have data. And so folks who can really tap into the data stream, there's so much data coming off of the new in-situ monitoring and the process yep. controls that it's just noise sometimes. Yep. So how do you guys go about um, taking all that noise and turning mm -hmm. it into real, I'll say wisdom or actionable, mm -hmm. uh, actionable things mm -hmm. for the customer? Well, it obviously starts with what they think their specifications are. <laughs> what right? they think they are. Mm. Right and, and then we learn along the way, together, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's one of the reasons where our scientists you know, back in Cleveland are, are excited to, mm -hmm. to be a part of what we do here. Some of our largest customers in this space are companies that everyone here knows. Mm -hmm. And then there are those that are startups. Yeah. And we're able to meet them where they are. Um, with data, mm -hmm. with suggestions, and an open mind. Mm -hmm. um, those three things together, you know, ultimately will put us on the path to success. Mm -hmm. uh, and if the client wins, then, then we continue to win. Mm -hmm. So, are you looking in your crystal ball there, Ron? <laughs> when you hired this guy, and all that he's worked on and all that he knows, where, where is NSL headed? in the next three years? I think, like this industry, a bigger portion of the total pie. Okay. Um, and growing is, that pie. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because if, if, if this pie continues to grow, we come along for the ride. As long as we do what we say we're going to do. Sure. Deliver accurate results. Yep. Timely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and with, uh, with a very we think unique position in the marketplace, which is how do you want it? Mm -hmm. You know, that can look like the test reports themselves. It can look like uh, the, the client representatives, like what is important to you? We try to tailor our service model specifically to the customer's needs. So that's awesome to hear. And um, Ed, I know you have a penchant for policy. Mm -hmm. And I know you've dabbled in that over the the career that you've had and I'm always at America makes we're always trying to see around corners to understand how you might encounter barriers or maybe some incentives would support you better and are do you have in mind any ideas what are are there any policy blind spots you think that you know we ought to be thinking about or um, are there things that you'd like to see um, on the policy side that could support this vision that NSL analytical has well, I think it goes back to, it's this combination of a, a demand signal from our um, government partners and customers, right? Maybe that's, I'm thinking mostly of the Department of Defense, but not exclusively Department sure. of Defense. So for us, we're, we're on, we see this cusp of going to production. Right? And we're co-investing with our customers so that we support the industry and we grow together. So the most important thing that like when Ron and I are talking about or the leadership team is, is that, um, that demand signal directly to the small businesses, right? Because it can be hard as a small business. So, so in certain ways, right, working with smaller companies or like America makes mm -hmm is straightforward for us as a small business to go straight into the Department of Defense is a challenge. Yes. It's not that we don't do it, yes. it's just it's just harder as a smaller company. And, and and then the flip side of that coin, so one is the demand signal, the flip side is we need our federal partners to look to commercial industry and truly understand how far forward this technology is and can be. So. We can't, we, in this, in 2023, we have to understand what's risky and not risky. Not adopting new technology is riskier than adopting the technology, full stop. Yeah, I believe that. That's the key, those two things together 
and, 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 and we'll play our part in the industry, we're gonna grow together, we're all gonna rock it forward together. But it's really those two things, it's the demand signal, and then it's that, it, it, I, I can't emphasize it enough, it's, it's riskier to not adopt the technology than it is to adopt it. Well, I think we know that there are other nations that want the prosperity and security that we have. Yep. And those other nations are nipping at our heels in terms of competitiveness and um, a whole lot of other things. And we need to make sure that our industry is ready to produce enough for itself and to do it in a safe way profitable way and I think um, you know companies like you NSL analytical can be the glue that helps the industry move forward quickly yep. and then you know that demand signal also is about the funding and financing of those small businesses and different projects yep. obviously the private sector needs to be unleashed to make good decisions and good choices but you know at America makes and and with our membership like you we need to make sure that we're taking on the right kinds of R&D projects and the right kinds of training projects to get us to that point where industry can say, yeah, this is de-risk enough, I can invest in this. Yep. Yep. And so it sounds like you guys are really helping pave the way. And uh, I want to I want to give you one last chance to t tell me, you know, when you lean in on this hard, what do you what do you what do you want to happen today? You know, I think it, it really boils down to, I mentioned earlier in, in our discussion that we've got three fundamental values as a company. One is our clients. Um, the second is our employees, our team members. Um, but the third, and one that really embodies what we're here today uh, to do, is to, to be a part of this marketplace. Um, not just the customers, but broadly whether it be equipment providers, raw material providers, service providers. Um, we're, if we all get there, if we all like, truly partner, we had this discussion this morning with the client, yep. Yep. if we truly open that up, we can continue to, to uh, lead the, the world um, in prosperity and development mm -hmm. and innovation. And we're excited to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. It all boils down to trying to make the world a better place. And uh, I'm really glad that you guys are here helping me out. So thanks for coming today. It's great to meet you and great to see you. Um, and let's go forth and do cool things. Yeah, absolutely. Right. 3D print some stuff. Yeah, <laughs> let's go print some stuff. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was awesome. <laughs>